Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing member of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And what a week it has been on your screen right now is the inimitable Keanu Reeves standing in front of the E3 2019 presentation for Cyberpunk 2077, very prominently above a giant Xbox logo, which leads us into today's video. If you haven't been following anything related to Cyberpunk, I'm very sorry to hear it because we've talked about it now for a number of hours, but you're in luck because we've put together a playlist called CD Projekt, CDPR, and Cyberpunk 2077. We have a reputation to burn. Basically, in response to the major news that came out of Sony last night, it said they would finally be offering the refunds that CD Projekt had intimated they would be offering earlier in the week, but because Sony isn't in the business of generally giving refunds to everybody that asks, they would also be removing Cyberpunk 2077 from their store, as I talked about last night, effectively saying, hey, look, we only refund games that are faulty, and you can argue with that policy to your heart's content, but that's what they do, and so if you are going to have us give refunds to your customers, well then, by God, we're going to treat your game like it's faulty, and this sent a shockwave across the environment of video games, the ecosystem, the game industry, the pundits, the journalists, the Twitter sphere wherever else, including the investor block. This isn't what you want to see immediately after your major game release. In a week where after you released The Witcher 3 years and years and years ago, this was to be the culmination, the celebration of your business model. And instead, it's an arrow pointing right down to the floor. Now, does this mean that CD Projekt as a whole is going to be gone forever and ever and we're never going to have to think about them again and this is just going to blow them up? I, I honestly don't think so. I think the infrastructure of Cyberpunk 2077, everything that people got so excited about it for at the prior three E3s, the reason it won so many pre-release awards, is still there. But it needs to be fixed up, and the game, pretty clearly, at least on consoles, shouldn't have released until sometime next year. And CD Projekt is going to have to deal with the reputational impact of the decisions it has made, particularly over the past couple of weeks, but really throughout 2020, for a long time to come. But I do think they will survive it, because I think they have a lot of gifted artists working at the company. Now, with that as the backdrop, with all that happened yesterday... CD Projekt tried to once again massage the news a little bit. They went out early this morning. Again, they're a Polish company, so I believe this tweet is from 3.15 in the morning or so, and went out with some information that confused some folks. They said, following our discussion with PlayStation, a decision was made to temporarily suspend digital distribution of Cyberpunk 2077 on PlayStation Store. You can still buy physical versions of the game in brick-and-mortar stores and online. All purchased digital and physical copies of the game will continue to receive support and updates as we continue to improve your experience. According to our knowledge, starting today, everyone who is not willing to wait for updates and wants to refund their digital copy of the game can do so by submitting a request at the PlayStation site for refunds. We are working hard to bring Cyberpunk 2077 back to PlayStation Store as soon as possible. Yes, they're in the business of making money by selling you software consumer goods. They would like those to be available at their retail outlet partners. Now, there are a couple of things that jump out of here immediately, right? Following our discussion with PlayStation, a decision was made to temporarily suspend digital distribution of Cyberpunk 2077. Now, this confused some people online. You get articles like this one at The Gamer. Cyberpunk 2077's removal was a CD Projekt Red decision because of things like this statement. A decision was made. But if this isn't your first rodeo in virtual legality, you don't fall for this kind of stuff, right? You don't even need this pro tip that I tweeted out. Pro tip, when they use passive voice, a decision was made. The subject isn't usually who they want you to think it is. You don't need to say a decision was made if you can say we made a decision to temporarily suspend. When you see this kind of language trickery, you know, realistically, the decision wasn't theirs to make. Or maybe you watched our video yesterday where you saw us talk about the board disclosure statement. And you can't really mess around with these if you're a public company. That's how you wind up not just getting in trouble monetarily, but going to jail for fraud on the market, in which the board at CD Projekt rightfully said, 
we disclose the decision of Sony Interactive Entertainment to remove. There's really no playing of games there. There's a little bit of playing of games with the statement that CD Projekt or CD Projekt Red makes in their tweet, but as far as the board is concerned, talking about the issue to the people with money on the line, they can't lie. And so they say the decision was from Sony Interactive Entertainment. You also see a couple of things in this statement that kind of rub folks the wrong way. According to our knowledge, starting today is a weird bit of language. Now, again, they're a Polish company, so I want to give them the benefit of the doubt here. This strikes me as a translation issue. We wouldn't usually see according to our knowledge in an English statement of this kind. They are effectively just trying to say, as far as we know, according to what PlayStation told us, this is how this will work from here on in. But it does suggest the rapidity, the speediness in which CD Projekt and their PR teams are working right now to try to nip this in the bud and get this under control to limited success, I have to say. The other thing that really rubbed people the wrong way is this phrase. According to our knowledge, starting today, everyone who is not willing to wait for updates can go get a refund. If you aren't really on our team, if you aren't a CD Projekt Red or Cyberpunk fan, well, I guess you can go get your money back. But as we said on Monday and on Tuesday and yesterday a little bit, we're going to make this right by you. So we know that our real fans, the people that really believe in us, they're willing to wait for updates. It's it's suggestive of some kind of uh, flaw on your part to not be willing to just grant an unlimited loan to CD Projekt and wait for them to deliver the product that you thought you were buying a couple of days back. So that rubbed people the wrong way. But hey, CD Projekt has rubbed all sorts of folks the wrong way, including but not limited to Sony, Microsoft, and their retail partners, which leads us to the main question, the topic of this thumbnail. As we finished up our video yesterday talking about the fact that Sony had removed Cyberpunk from their store, one of the things we focused on was that all eyes would now turn to Microsoft and Xbox. This was their website as of yesterday, a prominent Cyberpunk right up front. Welcome to Night City by Cyberpunk. We associate the Cyberpunk name with the Xbox brand because throughout this entire process, that is what Microsoft has been paying for. This was Cyberpunk 2077. They won every E3 award you can imagine. This was a game that was the successor to The Witcher 3, one of the most popular and long-lasting role-playing games of all time. CD Projekt Red could do no wrong. This was an easy marketing spend by Microsoft and Xbox. But what it means is that they succeeded and the Xbox brand and Cyberpunk brand are somewhat linked together. And unexpectedly, from Microsoft's perspective, the launch didn't go as they would have hoped it would. So not only had they trotted out Keanu Reeves onto their stage in 2019, not only are they the last thing that you see in a lot of the advertisements for Cyberpunk right now, they have custom build Xbox Ones, which are apparently one of the worst places to play Cyberpunk 2077. So Xbox had a decision to make. Now, as of right now, their website just shows a countdown sale at the top. Doesn't mean that they made that decision based on anything happening with respect to CD Projekt Red and Cyberpunk. This could all be set up already, but it is still noteworthy that as of yesterday night, at midnight or so, they had this big Cyberpunk ad. They no longer have that up, at least on the main page, before you click on anything else. And what would they do in the face of Sony's decision? Sony actually going out there and saying, this is unacceptable for our customers. We do not endorse selling this into our digital ecosystem. Well, Xbox went a different direction. Here's Xbox tweet from just a couple of hours ago. Cyberpunk 2077. To ensure that every player can get the experience they expect on Xbox, we will be expanding our existing refund policy to offer full refunds to anyone who purchased Cyberpunk 2077 digitally from the Microsoft store until further notice. This is similar to what Sony said at the top of their statement, Sony Interactive Entertainment strives to ensure a high level of customer satisfaction. Therefore, we will begin to offer a full refund for all gamers who have purchased this game via the PlayStation Store. But they don't have the secondary sentence, as you can see as part of, the, as part of this Twitter thread. Instead, they go the other direction. While we know the developers at CD Projekt Red have worked hard 
to ship Cyberpunk 2077 in extremely challenging circumstances, we also realize that some players have been unhappy with the current experience on older consoles. To date, we have granted refunds to the vast majority of customers who have requested one. To request an Xbox refund for Cyberpunk 2077, please head to the linked page that we put in this tweet. And a number of people reported on this as Microsoft says they won't be delisting the game. And I do think that that inference is justified, that this would have been the time that Xbox would have said, hey, we're taking it off the store, or if they had the capability of doing it, we're taking it off access to only the base Xbox One or the One X or the, the One S, I think, and the Series S and the Series X work with it fine. Uh, but that if they could control that, they might try to do that. One of the big problems here is with so many kind of generations, cross generations, pros, Series S's and One S's out there in the marketplace, you have different experiences, even within a very kind of narrow band of Xbox ecosystem where it is really having trouble on the baseline one, the, the box from 2013, and really isn't having trouble on the Series X, which is what I have been playing it on, even if the textures aren't great. So these companies, Xbox, Microsoft, and Sony, are really having to make decisions across a broad range of user experiences. And I do think if you are coming at this from the side that Sony shouldn't have removed it from the store, one of the arguments that you can make is, okay, yeah, it's bad on the 2013 PlayStation 4, but I just got a shiny, big, tall, white PlayStation 5, and it works fine. And I know a number of people have reported crashes, and that might be an issue as well. But just in terms of performance and moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, it works fine on the PlayStation 5. I don't want to have somebody else that has a PlayStation 5 not be able to get this experience that I got. And that could be an argument. One of the things I said last night, and that's so interesting about this, is that you don't usually see these two companies diverge at such a great level, where Sony says, we're pulling it off the store, we don't like being treated this way. Microsoft undoubtedly doesn't like that CD Projekt Red went out and told people to go ask them for refunds, apparently without conversing with them beforehand. They undoubtedly don't like how the communications have worked here, but it is still important to them to not only get some of that marketing value back where they're attached to all of the ads for Cyberpunk, where they've spent all this money already associating the Xbox brand with the Cyberpunk brand, but they also probably see a circumstance where they can be the port in the storm for CD Projekt and CD Projekt Red to say, hey, just remember when that next great thing comes out that we were the ones that stood by you when Sony made your life so difficult. But it is a risk. And people asked me about this on Twitter when this news first broke. I said it was a gamble on the part of Microsoft, and I mean that. One of the things that is pretty systemic in watching corporations move around, especially in controversies and red alert crisis conditions like this one, is that there is always a certain amount of safety in following the leader. That once Sony does what they did, Microsoft really isn't going to take extra flack from following along in those footsteps. The only chance that they have to have something potentially go wrong in terms of messaging is to separate significantly as they have done here. And people ask, well, how could it possibly go wrong? And I said, well, they could lose the narrative, right? So the Xbox One version of the game is going to be purchasable by someone with only that 2013 box. They can play it. And as far as I know, Metacritic still says it's a four or a 5.2 or something in terms of experience because of the frame rate and all the other issues on that box. Microsoft is letting its consumers have that experience and they had the opportunity to protect them from that experience by doing what Sony did. So in terms of narrative, nobody can tell you how this will go. That's why I describe it as a gamble. But Sony can point to something like this and say, hey, we got out in front of this. This was not an acceptable experience for our players. Certification at the Sony level has to mean something. We will take these steps if something like this happens and Microsoft will leave you to the wolves. The opposite side of that equation, of course, is that Microsoft is giving gamers and players autonomy, that they can go and decide whether something makes sense for them. And they're certainly not cutting off those people with their bright, shiny new Xbox Series S or Series X, where apparently the game works fine on both consoles. And so Microsoft is saying, yeah, we know this is potentially a problem. We're still going to offer refunds. We're going to highlight the fact that our refund policy was already better than Sony's. We granted refunds to the vast majority of customers who have requested one. And you should remember that. 
So CD Projekt, yeah, we're going to help save you. We've already spent this money, so we don't necessarily have the same breadth of choices that Sony does. But don't forget, you, gamer, are ultimately the one in charge of your destiny. Sony wants to wall your garden more, and remember, we don't. We're the subscription model kings. We're Game Pass. We're a box that's going to change with you. We give you all the backwards compatibility. Xbox can 100% continue to position itself on that basis. And so you really do see a divergence, not just in business model between Microsoft and Sony, but also now you're seeing it on just a moment to moment decision making basis where Microsoft says, this makes sense for us because we're different from Sony. And Sony is keeping you from a game that you might otherwise be happy with or have the capability of becoming happy with. And when are they going to put it back? They didn't even give you a runway to know when it will go back. So while I don't think Microsoft is ready to advertise this moment that they are going to be the sole exclusive console home for Cyberpunk 2077, that is in fact what's happening right now unless they change their mind in the future. And we'll see if there's enough pushback from one player's then that might in fact be the case. There is a gamble here. It's a matter of who's going to win that narrative battle. And maybe you have an opinion on who's going to win that narrative battle that you can leave in the comments to this video because this is the kind of stuff that a guy like me finds absolutely fascinating. You're going to continue to see this bifurcation and divergence in new marketing plans, in new spends, and what Xbox and Sony is going to spend their money on. But of course, this isn't the end of the story for Cyberpunk or CD Projekt. Because the last thing we talked about in the video yesterday was what in the world is going to happen to physical retail? Because one of the major problems that happened this past week is that CD Projekt apparently didn't talk to any of its partners of any kind. So you wind up getting articles like this one in Vice where a leaked GameStop email says, CD Projekt will issue a patch on December 21st that should be a major fix to address customers' concerns. If customers are still unhappy and want to return their product, direct and send an email to CD Projekt Red for reimbursement directions. We aren't going to deal with this. We sold them a game. We aren't giving refunds at GameStop. Go ask CD Projekt, who is just sending messages out into the ether. Now, that's a couple of days back. But now we have a similar statement, which was recorded here by Paul Tassie over at Forbes from Best Buy. Good morning. Obviously, Cyberpunk 2077 had a ton of anticipation coming into its release. And while I've not played it myself, it would appear that perhaps for some, it hasn't lived up completely to that anticipation. While many are enjoying the game, and it appears that there is a patch coming on December 21st, 2020, that should hopefully help improve the game even further, we can certainly understand why some might be wanting to return the game even after it is opened and played. Normally, Best Buy is unable to offer returns of open game software per our return and exchange promise here. However, after some deliberation and seeing that the vendor will be allowing returns through December 21st, 2020, Best Buy will also be allowing returns for select open Cyberpunk 2077 SKUs through that same December 21st date. Beyond that date, we will return to our normal return and exchange promise for the game, meaning if it's open, no. Here are the game SKUs that will be returnable. And you can bring your game to your local Best Buy store, or if you had purchased, shipped it to your home, you can return it via mail. Best Buy is opening up the floodgates. You can return Cyberpunk, no matter how much you've played it, no matter how much you've liked it or not, up through December 21st. Now, why is that happening? You start to see that maybe CD Projekt is having some kind of communication. Seeing that the vendor will be allowing returns through December 21st could mean one of two things. It could mean that this Best Buy person just read the statement from CD Projekt and knows that that December 21st date is important to them. But more likely, when you're talking about one of the biggest retailers in the United States, they have had conversations with CD Projekt and with WB, which I think publishes their game here in North America, and has said, well, if you take the money then you're going to have to give that back when we are accepting these refunds. So we have to have some kind of logistics chain of what's going to happen if we take this game back. You're not going to just hold the money hostage. And so if the vendor, CD Projekt slash WB, is taking the game back, then we will do it too at Best Buy. And whether or not GameStop changes its position or Walmart or Target or anywhere else where you might buy games is an open question. But even after that point in time, and God forbid if the December 21st, 2020 patch doesn't do what CD Projekt is basically apparently telling its retail partners it will do and fix everything up miracle style, then you once again have this question writ large 
after that date going into Christmas? Will these major retail outlets, brick and mortar stores carry this thing when Sony is telling the world that it's not good enough to run on their system? Now that Xbox is saying it is, or at least you have permission to go see for yourself, it becomes an even more tricky question. Do you only pull Sony and keep Microsoft up at your store? Do you pull none of them and let the chips fall where they may? Certainly everybody is incentivized here to make money where they can find it, but it's going to be a very interesting, let's call it 10-day period for CD Projekt, Sony, Microsoft, Best Buy, Target, GameStop, and everybody in between. This has been Virtual Legality for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Obviously, the Cyberpunk series has gotten out of control with the size that it is. That's why we started a playlist when we really weren't expecting one. CD Projekt Red has long been one of my favorite developers. Witcher 3 is one of my favorite games. And to be honest, I've enjoyed playing Cyberpunk 2077 on my Xbox Series X. But that doesn't mean we won't call out missteps here in this space. And certainly CD Projekt and CD Projekt Red, the developer, has given us no small amount to choose from. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, ring bells, tell folks that we are here. Due to the popularity of last night's video, we might well make 30,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you'd like to help contribute to that goal, please do hit that subscribe button. I would very much appreciate it. And tell people that we're having these conversations about business, law, all this fun stuff in video games, software, technology, movies, television, music, and all the other pop culture that you're already reading about on a day-to-day -day basis. If you caught this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And if you listen to it as a podcast, thank you so much for listening. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel.